Ethical brain, an emotional shortcut to solve a dilemma. How does the brain register the principle of not doing to others what you do not want to be done to you? Five workers are working on a railroad. In the distance, a train is approaching at high speed, and for sure it will run over them. You are on a bridge over the rails, and you could save those workers if you push down another man who is standing by you. This is one of the 60 dilemmas offered to volunteers to study the neuronal circuits processing such decisions. Most of the volunteers rapidly decide, in five seconds, not pushing the person at their side. They make that decision with an intense feeling of compassion and rejection of causing any harm. Scientists have followed the brain activity while the person is deciding what to do. Neuroimage techniques detect an intense activity in areas of the brain cortex, processing our relationship with others. Making a decision to cause or not direct damage to another person entails a strong emotional component. A new experiment puts forward the possibility of preventing the five workers being run over through switching the rails, thus deviating the train to rails where only one person is working. This impersonal action, switching the rails, would cause an indirect damage and would avoid directly a most serious damage. Most of the volunteers opted to switch the rails and needed two more seconds to decide, no matter if the answer was affirmative or negative. A strong activation of areas associated to short-rate memory to stop the emotional information for two seconds needed to analyze the cost-benefit relationship. To know what is happening in our brain when confronted with dilemmas with human lives involved will help to understand how we use our capability, genuinely human, to judge actions as good or bad. Neuroimage techniques show that areas involved in emotions, decision-making, solving a personal conflict, or how to behave in our social relationships and memory become activated. The first step our brain takes to decide is generating an emotional component in its central layer. The hypothalamus, liberating neurotransmitters oxytocin and vasopressin, takes part with the brain amygdala in the emotional process, evaluating the meaning of the biological information received. It might be positive or negative. The amygdala is a communication key combining emotion with motivation. At the same time, it is connected with several points at the cerebral cortex. In the frontal lobe, it connects with its main node, the orbitofrontal cortex. This region is capable of breaking automatic impulses and deciding in agreement with values and norms freely being assumed. Positive or negative feelings appear then, though not determining the decision. They are like weights tipping strongly the scales towards one side or the other. They intuitively provide a spontaneous knowledge on a specific conduct and determine if it is good or bad. Emotions provide a shortcut, a natural help to decide in limit situations requiring an immediate and direct action. As it happens in this case, the dilemma involves acting directly on a person. The reward system sends its signals through dopamine. Whatever is convenient or not to an animal is rooted in the survival instinct of the species. Animals never make mistakes. They never decide. They have as something natural to them an automatic and efficient behavior. The universal principle of the human being not to do to others what you do not want to be done to you is rooted in our natural trend to preserve life and being conscious of that. This rule appears naturally registered in our brain as a detector provoking the automatic emotion of pleasure when helping others and that of repugnance when causing damage. They also cause to appear feelings of compassion, guilt, or shame. It is a natural intuition telling us what is right and what is not. As the neuroscientist from Harvard, Mark Hauser, affirms, the human being has an innate moral sense. The second step of the brain is slower and corresponds to the system analyzing and evaluating the response with respect to personal convictions. This step is essential to reach a decision. Studies have been carried out in two types of persons to analyze this system in decision-making. First, persons with cerebral damage in the frontal junction of both hemispheres connecting emotions and analysis. It may be seen that they follow a utilitarian pattern rather uncommon and rapidly decide to kill, pushing one person to the rails 
and so save five persons. Due to their cerebral lesion, these persons lack the innate guide to make decisions after the alarm of an emotion, although the system analyzing cost-profit is kept. Unpleasant feelings, repugnance to cause damage, are signals leaving them unperturbed. They do not need extra time, since breaking natural emotions not generated in them is not needed. However, in a wider and more impersonal context, when emotions are lower, such as shifting the rails, their conduct is normal. They deliberate. These two experiments with trains have been carried out with utilitarians, highly trained in calculating and applying risk-benefit ratio in their lives. Surprisingly, they decide to push one to the rails and shift the rails in exactly the same time, seven seconds. Therefore, two extra seconds are needed so that the analytical system of the cost-benefit ratio is adjusted and imposed on natural emotion, rejecting a personal direct damage. As values are not biologically established, they may differ between cultures. That would explain reactions of utilitarians. Cerebral images show in both instances that an intense frontolateral activation is needed to calculate advantages and disadvantages in both dilemmas. Then, why is a healthy person, capable of analyzing and deciding, without being subject to emotions or feelings? The key lies in the capacity we have to break information reaching the cerebral cortex from the processor of emotions. A triangle of neurons in the frontal lobe acts as a break of the information flow coming from different areas. In the first place, neurons of the communication key break the flow of information from the amygdala. Expectations are processed and the future is depicted. Then, options where a reward option is detected are stored in the front pole. Neurons of the front pole and the lateral area break each other. After a short time, the lateral area contextualizes the situation and a result, the final response, is reached. Even with cautious research on something so complex as the human mind, neurosciences aim at the way the brain keeps registered the natural principle, therefore universal, of not doing to others what you do not want done to you. This principle, remaining unconscious during deliberation, assumes an intuitive knowledge where the natural emotion of not causing any damage and offering support is rooted. This emotion is more intense the closer that person is to us. It is a natural emotional guide not determining our conduct. The stop and think step needed to decide in a highly emotional tension supplies the analytical component characteristic of human rationality, so we may talk of the ethical brain as an emotional shortcut when confronted to a dilemma.